To make this cardigan, you'll need to download the pattern in the description box. You can easily print and stick the pages together and then cut out your size. This pattern comes in sizes 6 to 32 and is perfect for autumn. I'm using a Ponte Roma fabric for this project. It's really soft and very comfortable. You'll want to use a stretchy knit fabric for this cardigan to create a really nice relaxed fit. On the back bodice, mark a notch in the center of the neckline as well as the center of the sleeve heads and sleeve hem. With right sides together, place the front bodices and the back bodice on top of each other and align at the shoulders. Sew the shoulder seams using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. For this project, use a stretch stitch. This can either be a zigzag stitch or use an overlocker. So I've just sewn the shoulder seams of the cardigan and now we're going to attach the sleeves. I'm now going to open the bodices out like this and this is where the armhole is. Now with the right side of the bodices facing up, we're going to place the sleeve head on top of this with the right side facing down. Make sure to align the sleeve head notch with the shoulder seam and pin in place. Sew the sleeve head to the armhole using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and repeat for the other sleeve. I've just sewn the sleeves into the armholes and this is what it looks like. This is now the right side of the back bodice facing up and I'm going to fold the front over this. What this means is that both of the front and back bodices are facing right sides together. Now we're going to pin the side seam of the bodice and underarm seam. Sew this in one swoop using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and repeat for the other side. The cardigan now looks like this and I've sewn both of the side seams and the underarm seams. I'm going to be sewing version A which has a sleeve cuff. If you're sewing version B, you'll want to fold the sleeve hem towards the wrong side by half an inch twice and then sew that all along. So I'm making the sleeve cuff version and these are the sleeve cuff pieces. With the right side facing up, we're going to fold it in half and pin the short edge. Sew using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now we're going to fold the cuff in half with wrong sides together. This will mean that one edge will be folded with a neat finish and on the other side, the bottom edges will be raw. We're going to place the side seam on one side and then mark a notch on the other side to determine the center. Make sure you mark the notch on the raw edge side and not the folded edge. I also personally like to roughly clip the edges together to make the next step easier. I've just gone ahead and also pressed the folded edge of the cuff for a neater finish. So this is the sleeve and this is the right side facing out. We have a notch marked on one side and the side seam is the opposite. Taking our cuff piece, we're going to align this side seam with the sleeve side seam and then we're going to align the other notch with this notch here. Making sure that right sides are together, slide the sleeve cuff over the sleeve hem. Evenly stretch distribute and pin the rest of the sleeve cuff to the sleeve hem. Make sure that all the layers are pinned correctly and then sew using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance.
This is what the sleeve cuff looks like once sewn. Flip the sleeve cuff over to the right side and give it a nice press. Now we're going to overlock or zigzag stitch the bottom hem edge all along. This is optional as knit fabric doesn't fray, but I personally prefer the finished look this way. Fold the bottom hem towards the wrong side by half an inch and pin along the entire edge. Sew along the entire hem. Now it's time to sew the neckband. This is what the neckband looks like. I've cut interfacing and then fused it to the fabric, but I made sure to make the interfacing half an inch narrower on either side before fusing it to help with bulk. We have two neckband pieces that are interfaced. Now we're going to place both neckband pieces together with the right sides facing and pin the left short edge. Sew using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. This is what it looks like sewn. It's a really long neckband piece and is now ready for the next step. This is the back bodice with the right side facing up. I've already marked the center notch on the neckline. We're going to align the neckband center back to the notch with the right sides together and pin along. It is normal to have excess at the end, but now I'm going to pin the other side. So using a half an inch seam allowance, you can either use a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch, but don't use an overlocker as it will create a bulky seam. This is what the neckband looks like once it's sewn to the neckline. As you can see, the neckband extends past the hem as this accommodates for all the sizes of this pattern. We're going to keep half an inch overhanging the bottom, but cut off anything past that point. I have the wrong side of the cardigan in front of me and this is the back bodice. We're going to take this to our ironing board and press the entire outer edge of the neckband in towards the wrong side by half an inch. This will make it a lot easier when pinning the next step. I've just pressed the outer neckband edge and this is what it looks like. I'm going to use my hand to roughly press the seam allowance up into the neckband. You can see the previous stitching line that we used to sew the neckband. What we're going to do is fold the neckband over this and place it just over the stitching line. So as you can see, we've just folded the neckband over the stitching line. When pinning in place, we want them to lie on the right side of the fabric because it will be easier to create a neater finish. So hold the neckband in place with one hand and then roll to the right side and use a pin on the right side to catch all the layers. So on this side, the pin is inside the neckband area and on the other side, you can see the pin has caught all the layers. Repeat that all along the entire neckband, but stop two inches from the bottom edge of the hem.
just pinned the entire neckband hem and this is what it looks like from the right side and then the wrong side. Sew this at the machine but place this side up as you're sewing to make sure you're neat from the right side and catching all the layers. This is what the neckband looks like from the right side and then the wrong side looks like this and everything is neatly concealed. Now we're going to finish the hem of the bodice. We're going to make sure there's a half an inch overhang and then fold the bottom edge inside by half an inch. Because we already pressed the folded edge at the neckband, we can follow the same method for the neckband by placing it just over the stitching line. Pin in place and then sew along close to the edge from where we previously stopped and across the bottom edge to enclose the hem. I've just sewn the hem and I've neatly enclosed the raw edges. I'm going to press the hem now and the entire neckband for a cleaner finish. Now it's time to sew the buttonholes. Use the guide provided and align the edge for whatever version you're sewing to the hem of the cardigan. I like to use a pen to mark the buttonholes. Just make sure they are centered in the neckband. The guide I share is for two centimeter wide buttonholes, but this can be easily adjusted for your preference. I always recommend taking a scrap piece from the bottom of the interface neckband that we previously cut off and use that to practice on first in case you need to make adjustments. This is what the buttonholes look like. I like to use this buttonhole chisel to neatly open my buttonholes. Just make sure to use a cutting mat underneath to absorb the cut. I then like to lie the cardigan down and place one neckband over the other, aligning at the bottom. Then with a pen, mark in the center of the buttonholes. That's given us three markings to sew the buttons onto. I'm using these cute brown ones and I'm going to sew those on now. So we also have two pockets, one is for the left and one is for the right. You want to use an overlocker or a zigzag stitch to finish all the pocket edges first. Then fold the top edge down towards the wrong side by one inch and sew across. Press for a neat finish. The top pocket edges should now look like this. Now we're going to press the side seams of the pockets towards the wrong side by half an inch and the other side by half an inch and then press the bottom by half an inch. So do that on the iron for both pocket pieces. This is what the pocket looks like once pressed. Now we're going to place this onto the cardigan. With the top of the pocket up and the right side facing out, center them onto the front bodices and pin. So this is definitely a personal preference, but for version A, I like to leave a two inch gap from the bottom edge. Starting from the top right edge, sew down, across the bottom and then back up, but leave the top section free because this is where our hands will go. The cardigan is now complete. I hope you enjoyed making it. You can find the pattern linked below. Let me show you what it looks like on. Mm -hmm. 